We've got me and Tammy here at the board meeting. Uh, SIB has opened up the boardroom and it's available to the public according to the posted meeting notice so that we're in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. I'll talk a little bit more about that in the future. Um, I'm not going to go over the legislative update unless you guys have any questions. I will let you know that the select committee has... Um, canceled their April meeting and the team has been in contact with select committee staff on the different studies that were passed by the legislature, especially those ones that require coordination with the select committee. If you have any questions about any of that stuff, I'd be happy to answer it. Okay then. Um, the, for the administrative update, just to let all of you guys know, we have um, a continuation of operations plan that we had in place. All of the employees have the equipment and the training uh, to work uh, telework. And so everybody has been doing that now this um, last week and this week and uh, even part of the week before. So we've already implemented full telework for the agency. All the emails are being forwarded, all the phone calls to everybody's lines and to the main line are being forwarded. So anybody that calls in or emails in, their requests or their uh, communications are being received and responded to. We've also got a note on the front door uh, of the office in case anybody happens to show up on per in person. That's extraordinarily rare, but in the event, it's got all the staff contact information on the door. So, um, for the team, that's where things currently sit. Um, we had been working on the agency move. We're, with everything that's going on, we've actually, um, uh, Karen had found a spot that looked like it would work, but we're not going to push to uh, move ahead on that at this moment. Wait for a little bit to see how things settle down. The, we're in through the end of the year, and if we needed to stay longer, the SIB is okay with that. So there's no urgency on us right now to move forward with um, trying to move out before January. The one other, all, all the outreach activities that we were aware of have all been canceled. And we'll keep you up to date on that. Currently, we, the, all the training for board members and staff, other than some of the online training for the team, has all been canceled as well. And uh, we didn't have anybody, we don't have any board members or team members scheduled for training at this point in time prior to this uh, that would require travel prior to next November. So um, we're okay there and then we'll have more information as it becomes available throughout the spring and summer. With respect to the board meetings, there was uh, an a uh, proclamation by the governor yesterday which uh, made some changes to open public meetings, including the left two board meetings. The proclamation says that, it, one, it's okay to have electronic meetings like you guys are already set up and like you're doing today. However, if you do have a meeting, the Open Public Meeting Act still requires the public to be able to attend. So again, we're good as far as today. We're doing it in the board meeting at the exact specified location. The building is open if somebody happened to show up and nobody has. However, um, in the for future meetings, if we were either the left, the you know the book. Perhaps the building ends up being closed 
and we are unable to have it in this location and are forced to have an all-electronic meeting. We do have the technology to move to an all-electronic meeting, so you wouldn't even need to have me and Tammy here in the board meeting today. The only reason we're here today is to satisfy Open Public Meeting Act requirements. The, but if you do have meetings, even an electronic meeting, you have to have a way for the public to attend. We do have that uh, capacity, but it's kind of clunky. The only way anybody can attend meetings right now is the same way you guys are. They can either sign on through the computer or they can call in to our teleconference line with the pen. The problem is the access is identical for board members and for the public. So in the rare occasions in the past where um, like somebody has a member of the public, maybe a, somebody who's going, uh, been uh, nominated to the board but not officially appointed by the governor yet, for instance, where we've allowed them to listen in on the meetings, that has come with some pros and cons. Uh, if the person on the phone doesn't know how to mute their background noise, we get that. Um, if it's somebody from the public who wants to interrupt the meeting and um, testify, for instance, there's no real way to prevent them from, with our current technology, to prevent them from kind of participating in the meeting exactly the same as a board member. We'll work on that to see if there is a way to maybe um, fil filter that or even if that filtering is permissible under the new Open P Public Meetings Act order. Um, it's brand new, so we're still kind of sorting through that uh, with TOR, and we should be prepared for the next meeting. Now, before I move on, do you guys have any questions about um, how we're operating under the new, uh, under the current situation? Steve, this is Paul. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, um, Ade? Yep. Uh, I just, I think I'm regarding this. Uh, uh, meeting, I think uh, our law team checked into this and they said that the public can participate by submitting a written comment or whatever it is certain hours before the uh, the meeting. I, ha I held a meeting yesterday for our council and that is what we did. I think uh, uh, if the information is well posted out there at least. That is what our legal team is saying and that is what we are doing. Asking the citizens to participate by sending their comment and that comment will be read into the record and uh, the board can respond. Just, an, thank, just, just a thought. Thank you, Ade. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll, I made a note of that and I'll follow up with uh, Tor on that um, after the meeting. Who else did I hear that wanted to comment? Uh, it, it was Wolf. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you for hosting this this way and uh, thinking through how we proceed forward. As you concluded your comments a moment ago, you actually said current or new. Um, and, and it causes me to think about should we, how should we think of this uh, going forward? Uh, and, and if we do this month by month, uh, my concern would be that, you know, we have to establish and make sure we have quorum each time on yeah. a call, which is a good thing to do. I'm not arguing against that. But if we have to take actions to slide each next meeting forward, uh, it may be more complex than if we were to say for the duration of meetings will be held in accordance with. Bam, bam, bam. Wolf, and, you are. Uh, and then we revert. So. Yeah, that is. Uh, that's actually one of the items I wanted to bring up next. So that's kind of like a perfect segue. Um, I don't want to quite jump 
ahead yet. If anybody else has, if anybody has any questions about what we're doing as far as like today goes with the team or anything like that today, if not, then I would like to talk about the next um, couple of meetings and uh, what your responsibilities are and what some of the options are. You guys okay moving on to that? I am. Okay. Um, under the new Open Public Meetings Act guidance from the governor, um, boards are asked to only uh, limit, uh, limit their agendas to only those items that are necessary. For the left two board, the, your uh, primary statutory responsibility is rate setting and the adoption of all of the necessary actuarial factors, et cetera. You are, this is a rate setting year, so you're scheduled to adopt rates by the end of July. I have been in contact with the state actuary's office they um, are confident that they could get you all of the information that you need in order to adopt rates in a informed manner without the April meeting. And so one item that I wanted you, I wanted to talk about all of you guys today um, is whether or not we can just cancel the April meeting. Um, that would require a board motion and a vote. And then after you've uh, decided what you want to do with April, then I'd like to talk with you about options kind of for May and moving forward. Um, do you have any questions about the April meeting? So, Steve, can you hear me? This is Mark. Yes, Mark. I can hear you. So, yep, yeah, okay. So, I think for everybody's health and safety, and since we don't have anything that's necessarily pressing, I'd make a motion that we cancel the April meeting and then go uh, month by month and see how things work out. Well, can we just, can we limit the motion right now to the um, April meeting to keep it less complicated? Yes. So, uh, amend, uh, so moved. There's been, um, um, I, I believe there's been a motion and a second to cancel the April meeting. It, um, would all of you who are in favor, it, well, is there any more discussion about that motion? Steve, if I, if I might, this is Wolf. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I'm doing a lot right now is trying to synthesize as best we can what's going on around us economically, socially, in terms of health, disruption of the community. I think our actuaries and our uh, economic forecasters, our SIB inputs into any rate setting process will actually benefit greatly from the additional time we can give them yes. in not having an April meeting given them till May to try and assemble the parts into something a little more coherent uh, when we see better, better judgments about what this is, the length of the effect, uh, the expectations going forward. Uh, so I think you know, for all kinds of reasons, uh, I think it's beneficial to all concerned for us to wait until we hear something more complete and more uh, digestible in May uh, than we would be able to receive by the April meeting. Are there any other comments on the motion to cancel the April meeting? Okay, I'm going to, I've got um, eight board members, I believe, online. If it's okay with you, I'm just going to ask you to uh, call out your votes. I'll do it roll call fashion. Um, Tarina? I vote to cancel. Ade? Yes. AJ? Yes. Pat McGilligan? Yes. Wolf? Yes. 
Dennis? Yes. Representative Burquist? Yes. And Mark Johnston? Yes. Now, did any other board members happen to uh, join us uh, after we got started and are online now? Okay. Then that is uh, eight yeses. You have a quorum, and that's a majority. So the April board meeting is canceled, and we will notify um, all the required parties, to, and that will satisfy the Open Public Meeting Act for April. With respect to May, um, what, uh, again, the actuary's office kind of walking through a whole host of different possibilities. They wanted to give you guys an update on the um, experience study that was recently uh, completed and audited as far as how that has might change some of the assumptions that the plan is based on, which would in kind of roll over into rates as well um, in all likelihood. Then in the, uh, leading up to July, they also plan on doing the typical introduction to rate setting, what your responsibilities are, roll out the different options for rates, and then have a vote in July. Now going through all of that, the, the um, main driver as far as how many meetings that's going to take is you guys and your capacity. So for instance, if you wanted to do May, June, July, we're, that's currently what we've got uh, worked out with OSA. May is, at this point in time with everything that's going on, is still kind of uncertain. So if there was not to be a May meeting, then OSA feels like they could still do everything in June, July. And that wouldn't be overly compressed. You would still have a month to consider all the different options before you were asked to vote on it. In a kind of a next worst case scenario, we could send materials out to you ahead of time and you could have a June and July meeting and that would give you one month to sort of synthesize all the different options and all the different information and then vote on it in July. In a kind of a worst uh, case scenario, if we're unable to meet or unable to get a quorum or, or anything through until July, you could adopt rates at the July meeting and we would, the only item on the agenda would be rate setting and we would just take the time to go through it and make sure everybody has their, uh, all the information. That could still be sent out ahead of time, written. I could talk with each of you ahead of time about questions about that information to help prepare for a July meeting, and then you could adopt rates in July. In an absolute total meltdown situation, which we are far from, but you guys have already adopted rates for the next biennium. So even if in the total meltdown situation where the board was unable to meet um, all the way through July, your statutory obligations would still be satisfied. So I just wanted to let you guys know that you are in control of what you want to do, how aggressive or um, measured you want to be in your process moving forward. With that, one possibility would be to, um, because uh, like Wolf mentioned, 
things are so fluid right now. We don't know what we don't know, what the technology and what the social distancing and what the scenarios or uh, situation is going to be in May is really uh, impossible to predict right now. Uh, if you were willing to, uh, you as a board were willing to allow the administrative committee, delegate to the administrative committee, sort of the um, authority to inform me prior to the May meeting about the need or desire to meet in May, you could delegate that authority now. Um, I don't know, and we'd have to work out with TOR to what extent that that um, administrative committee decision on a May meeting would satisfy the new Open Public Meeting Act requirements or not. Technically, the temporary revisions to the Open Public Meetings Act are set to expire in uh, towards the end of April anyway. So. We might be back under full OPMA by May, or we might be under an extension of the existing requirements, which we're still trying to understand, or we may be under completely Steve, I've, I've new got to excuse myself. Uh, I'm, yep. I'm on a call. Yep. Thank you, Wolf. Okay. So we still have a quorum right now with seven members present. How do, what are your thoughts about um, the May meeting and leaving a decision on the May meeting up to the administrative committee, which is Dennis, Jason Graneman, and Ade? So, Steve, does that require a motion? Yeah, it would. Uh, before, uh, you could make a motion, and then you could talk about it in the discussion on the motion. Steve, I move that the administrative committee makes the decision about the May meeting. Second. There you go. All, All in right. favor? Well, <laughs> is there a discussion about that? No. <laughs> Get this train rolling, buddy. All right. Um, if you guys are, uh, well, then uh, if there's no discussion, um, I'm going to do a roll call vote again for the seven members still on the phone. Um, Tarina? Yes. Ade? Yes. AJ? Yes. Pat McGilligan? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Representative Burquist? Yes. And Mark Johnston? Yes. Okay, that motion passes as well. And then um, we will keep you guys informed. Um, again, we're teleworking, so I am available. If you guys have any questions, whether it's work-related questions, whether it's agency business-related questions, uh, all of you have my cell phone number. Uh, you can use it. It's perfect. You know, it, I, that's what I'm still working. And honestly, the questions that I've been getting from members and stuff have been kind of like a welcome relief. I, uh, uh, at this point in time, I'm going a little bit stir crazy. My wife's teleworking. The kids are home from school, and our house is the house that everybody's playing in. So um, when I get a work-related call, I actually, you know, and I have, have to excuse myself to a quiet room to answer it. It's actually a welcome distraction. Um, but that's the plan then. April is canceled. We'll take care of that. May will depend on a decision of the administrative committee, and we'll let you know. Um, we'll keep you informed about that moving forward. Do you guys have any questions about anything else uh, for this that you want to talk about at this particular meeting? Okay. I, um, 
then if you if you're okay if you guys are all good then uh, a, a, a motion to adjourn would be in order and again you can call me one on one or um, or uh, email and we get all of that okay great job Steve make a motion to uh, adjourn the uh, March meeting I second, second. <laughs> yeah. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <laughs> All right then. Um, hey, Calligate. <laughs> uh, uh, there's still there's still six of you. Even with uh, even if Pat was opposed, it would still pass. All right, guys. I I really I um, I can't tell you how much I appreciate everybody on the team and the way that they have handled all of these kind of um, unusual circumstances. I've had discussions, again, all of you one-on-one. -on -one. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support for everything that we're doing to kind of keep things rolling. Um, and I, I love working with you guys. It's a great team, both the staff and the board. Um, I'll be in touch with all of you, and you guys can reach out to me anytime you want, okay? Thanks, Steve. Thank all you, right. Steve. You guys stay yeah. safe and healthy, all right? Yeah, we you are. You too. guys, too. I know it's a, the world's a different place right now. Be safe. All right, buddy. You guys, everybody take care. All right. Bye.